Hello everybody and welcome to today's show. So today I'm very excited because I will be hosting uh, my friend and my brother who is going to be talking about how to establish a successful career in the military and get to enjoy all the lucrative benefits and pay that come from the military um, career. So welcome to the Genome Guy Show. Happy weekend. I hope everybody has been doing well. For those in the U.S., I hope you had a beautiful Thanksgiving. I had a beautiful one. I thank God. Um, Yes, as you already know the lingo, go ahead and tag people, invite other people, uh, get all of them to join us. Let them come over and let us learn from this very, very uh, good show that is going to be pretty informative. If you are willing or if you ever had a thought, can I join the military? You have maybe a child, a family member, a friend who would be interested in joining the military or oh, this today's show is for you. This show is for you and it will be helping you understand what you need to do, how you can get in there and how you will establish success inside the military. So welcome to the show. I'm very excited today, like I see, because I'm hosting my own brother. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just invite him over. I want you to hit me a thumbs up if you can hear me loud and clear. Please go ahead and type on the comment, yes, we can hear you, or let me know you can hear me. Hit that thumbs up, the like button, or comment on the, uh, write something on the comment, and I'll be glad to know that. So I'm going to get Kamal to join us. Hey, Mr. Kamal. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. Yes, I'm yes, thank you so much for joining the show today. I'm very excited. I was just telling them that today is one of the best days because I'm hosting my own brother, who is also my friend and my mentor. Amen. <laughs> yes, great. so guys, welcome to the show. We are very excited that you are here. Uh, Dr. Jeanette, you're saying you can hear us loud and clear. Thank you guys for tuning in. So, um, Kamal, everyone here is ready to hear from you because there's a few things that they are looking for. Everyone who is tuned in right now, and I see a good number of people, either they want to join in the, the military or they have a family member, a child, a son, or somebody who they know who can establish a good career in the military, and I could not think of any other better person to come here and provide this information. So um, you guys, I, if you can hear me, let me know in the comment. So I will go and allow you come out to jump right in and tell us in a snapshot who you are. <laughs> I already told them you're my brother, <laughs> but tell them who you are as we get started. All right, thank you. Thank you again for uh, inviting me to your show here. I'm delighted to be here and to be of help to anyone. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to uh, just share this information. It's, uh, I term it to be information that will be beneficial to somebody. And uh, I think uh, what I want to say at the very beginning is that it might not be all information that you need to know. There's a whole lot that I might not be able to share here that might be shared. Um, if say, for instance, you go and talk to our career uh, recruiter into the military or something like that. But I think we'll still be sharing more even in the civilian, not only in the military. Um, but yeah, so personally, um, I am civilian military uh, at the same time. And I I kind of joined the military a little late, so I have both the sides of sides of it. So I used to work uh, in the civilian side. Uh, mm -hmm. Once I came to the US, worked in the civilian side, and then at one point I I decided uh, let me do this. Mm -hmm. and I did it, and um, I can't regret any single day. Right, uh, mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. I love so that. I've been uh, in it. I did a few years, and then I. I and then now I'm again doing my civilian stroke military still. 
Oh, okay. I remember because when I came to the U.S., you were not in the military, but then you got in there and now it's you say you're outside. So is it like now you're not a military active duty or you're still part of them, but not necessarily like in Iraqi or something like that? What, what is the difference when we see a military person who is not actively in the military, but you still have the outfit because what you're wearing is a representation of the military. Uh, sure, there, there are different phases of it. And uh, yeah, and that's what I'm saying that some of the things that might you might not get into out of this show is that by reading more, you might find more information. And that's what I did because I had an interest since I, uh, since time in, yeah, well, I can remember exactly when. But mm -hmm. really what it is is, yes, you can be in different phases. You can either be active military in it. You're doing that full time. That's your job. Every day you wake up, you go to do that. Uh, other phases are where you can be in the uh, reserve. They call it reserve. And that one is requires it's a part time. So you can be, you're, you're doing your civilian job. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then requirements, you need to meet the requirements that are there for you to be in the military, but in the in the uh, reserve side. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And so if I can ask you, Kamal, what prompted you to join the military? Because I mean, you had a really good job. You had your, your career going in healthcare as a lab tech. Um, what made you want to make the move and go into the military instead of like getting a master's degree or a PhD in lab technician? Uh, sure. I will start by saying that uh, I loved my, my job as a medical lab tech. Uh, okay. That's one thing that you cannot pull me out of even up to today. <laughs> but uh, oh, for sure what drove me into this is I, I admired military since I was young. Uh, since we were in Kenya back in the days when we didn't even have a TV, I will listen to the radio when they were doing like the celebration Madaraka Day. And I just mm -hmm. hear the military with, with bands and that and the commands. I loved that. And so okay. I wanted to join. Uh, but it's a different story back in Kenya. Oh. Uh, but then still because I had that urge, um, when I, in church, we had the, the Pathfinder, you know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. that is pretty much an equivalent of a Scouts Club. And so I joined that because there was that marching, there is that order and all those things. So I joined that at church and then still at school, I was very active as a scout uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the scouts club. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I kept doing that, uh, but mostly I was involved mostly in church with the Pathfinders. And so when I came to the US, I, I read a little more because there's kind of a negative connotation about military in Kenya. Mm -hmm. but here is a little different. So okay. when I read more about it, over here, so I felt like this is what I've been longing for in my mm -hmm. life, and so I ended up making that move. Gotcha. And so, on the same note, do you think that uh, for somebody to be in the military, they need to have the calling? Because, for instance, gospel ministers uh, working in healthcare industry, a lot of people are like, if you don't feel it, you cannot just be in it. Do you think military is one of those careers that I need to have a calling before I can join it? I will say yes and no, but more to the yes. Mm -hmm. Because for one is uh, for you to be successful in what you do. I I will not advise anybody just to do it just because somebody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. If you want to do something, my motto, my life is if I have to do something, do it to the best because that's the strength God has given you to do. Right. So if you're joining it, one, mm -hmm. for sure for one thing you need to be ready for what it comes with it just doesn't come easy like that mm -hmm. and, and and things i will point out a few things you have to be ready to be disciplined because it calls for discipline and you, you you cannot just be anything and and be there you will not last for long you i've known people who join and then they out in one year or even less or some don't even make it through boot camp mm -hmm. just because they didn't have that but, mm. but if you're if you're really into it, you have to be ready to be disciplined. Or if you're already disciplined, you need to be able to. Um, I will call it to be humble, and this is why I say that. 
to be hard. I, I know it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> it's like you need to be rude and rough in the military. I, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. It's a little different if you think about it. It's uh, mm -hmm. why I'm saying that is because of there's a very high discipline that is there and respect that exists there that I don't I don't experience in the civilian side. Mm. Like, you wouldn't expect, uh, say, for instance, you're working in the civilian side to have authority over something that you can go to your boss and tell your boss what they need to do. No, mm. uh, no, you know, but, but that is what is in the military. So you can be just almost uh, the top guy, but you're being told some to do something by somebody who is of less rank than you, but you mm. still respectfully obey that because they have that authority to do that so really it's something that if you're old and you're joining and you have been living your life being told been telling other people what to do you mm -hmm. need to be told what to do and yeah you it was a little that. challenging because you're used to providing the commands and now you have to receive them i got it mm -hmm. all right now i want us to talk about the benefit because <laughs> there's a lot of information mm -hmm. out here that military has got really good benefits and then other people are like that's a man that we are confused a lot of people are confused are there really good benefits and if yes what are these benefits what should we look for uh, when we are thinking of um you know getting into the military and before you answer that i want to uh thank you guys for tuning in i really appreciate it's a good number of you already in here feel free to get to invite and tag other people share the video and at the same time we have come out live here he will be providing us with answers to questions that you might have so feel free to type them on the comments if you have a brother a sister a friend whoever maybe yourself you are thinking of joining and you you have a question you want him to help you address please feel free to go and type it in we will address it so come on uh tell us about these benefits because if i have to join it has got to be because of these benefits what are they and how do i get them um yeah, I will say that there are benefits in in that. If there are no benefits, uh, maybe nobody will be in there. We'll go and you find all oh, there's nothing about it and you get out. They are there. Uh, and it's pretty much almost the same with anything that you want to pursue in life. You want to go to school and become a, a computer, whatever, gig, because you will reap the benefit out of that. So Correct. It's, it's similar here too in, in this, but one thing that I say, yeah, people go there, there are people who join for the benefits and it it can be okay, but it might be a wrong reason for you to join if you're just going for benefits, if you don't have that heart of wanting to do it and wanting to be of, of effect to the world because of your service. Mm. So really what I will say is <clears throat> the benefits that are there they are there they are educational benefits there are benefits of uh, health health well insurance and all that for sure they are there mm -hmm. and they are great especially if you know how to earn to, to to harness them early to to plan for it and get them well um, mm -hmm. uh, what i caution people those who ask me if they should join is to tell them especially um, I, I, I encourage our people, especially um, the immigrants who come, if you're a parent or if you're... Oh, uh, you, you before you continue, family. someone is saying that you get a little louder, slightly louder. Gloria is saying oh. it's a little louder. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. So um, I, I was saying that it's, it's good for you to be able to know what benefits are there and how you can get to them in good time. And one of the greatest that I tell people is this, that I've worked with people who joined right after their high school. They joined at 18 or 19. Well, let's give it 20 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, you finish high school and, and, and somebody pushes you or your parents why I need and all that. And then you join at 20. You work for 20 years and you, and you retire after 20 years. Hmm. So how old are you when you're retiring? Like 40, 40 30 years. <laughs> so if somebody retires at 40, you're getting a retirement on that. And guess guess how much more you can do at 40. So you can technically, that's a, one of the benefits that a lot of people um, 
maybe get out of it. And some of us miss because we did not know anything like that. And one thing that uh, will shock you is when you join, you'll find out that from my personal experiences, I was like the only person who didn't have anybody else in my family as a military. Because everybody will say my grandpa was in it, my father was in it, my uncles are in it, and I'm in it, and my kids will be going in it because of knowing how you can benefit in, in those things. <clears throat> like they have it pre-planned ahead of time so that they can take advantage of joining at 18, 19, like you mentioned. Uh, exactly. Oh, wow. one, thing, one thing also that I don't, uh, I encourage people to do is uh, also ask, is you, if you're planning to join or if you're planning for your son or daughter to join, it's, it's good and especially good for them to at least have a high school, not high school, but high school is fine. But if somebody can push through college, you get a college degree. Mm -hmm. When you're joining, you have much better advantage because one, you're coming with a, with a degree. So you're coming to a particular line you want to do something and uh as you're coming like that you have a chance if you're a citizen and you have a degree you can apply and go direct to the officer side of the military instead of joining as an enlisted mm. uh, so you can go direct officer side which has more uh a little higher pay more benefits and and and, and that is what you look at so is it beneficial for me to join at 18 as an enlisted or I can wait for three, four more years for me to finish my college degree and join as an officer? So those are some of the things. That's, that's, that's the question I wanted to ask you because mm. I already have like my degree, I have my career going and now I want to join. Am I going to have to start from this scratch or uh, do I get any beneficial edge than somebody who did not even go to college, does not have any college degree or are we going to both start like, it, they don't even care mm. to have any education on that. Okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty much all that comes counts into when you're coming to join. It's it's, okay. it's different. It's different. You, it will account to that. I joined as a medical person in the military okay. because I already had my degree in medical. I was already a lab tech. So I joined and I came specifically and said, I want to be this. And then mm -hmm. they can work with you. Do we have a job like that? And, and I think that was one of the things that I wanted to mention that okay the military is pretty much like civilian anything you do in the civilian is done in the military so and you can transfer all these skills into the military and still establish a career exactly uh, we oh, okay. it's, it's needed Every, everything that you do in the civilian side almost mm -hmm. everything is needed mm -hmm. there too and so mm -hmm. it's just to know okay i do this i can go and talk to a recruiter and ask what can this translate into the military and, and you start working only that you will wear a uniform and go do something that's pretty much similar the same thing that you're doing the civilian side only in the military oh so does that mean like when you go to work because you used to work for different hospitals as a civilian and then you got into the military that means what you used to do in the hospitals is technically about the same thing that you do in the military just in the military hospitals it, it, it could be, it could translate almost the same, pretty much okay. almost the same. There's additional training that you will undergo and okay. um, pretty much, uh, but, but say for instance, you do the computer engineering or mm -hmm. software, whatever, mm -hmm. the civilian side. You come in the military, it will be almost the same thing pretty much. And then maybe you add a few things that they will train you on different different. Mm. Mm, yeah. I love that. You mentioned about a career coach or a recruiter in the military. So um, by this, it's more like a strategist who is going to come. So let's say um, I'm right here and I want to join the military. So what I need to do is to reach out to that recruiter or advisor and let them know, hey, this is what I've been doing. This is what I have as far as my education. And then they will guide me what I can do in the military just the same way that uh, we help people out here. For me, I help civilians out here or I help military people who complete their um, term or their service and they want to get into civilian jobs to come and help them position themselves. So even joining the military, you're advising that you need to do the same so that you can get position before you get in. Is that so? That's exactly it. So say, oh. there, there's some cases where some people will come, say for instance, you just come, you just want to join. Um, so at that point, then they can, like, they can be, okay, 
you do you have anything not really i don't have a degree i don't have whatever i just want to join then you can join and then they will put you where probably they need they see okay, okay over here we have a person who doesn't have anything that can be anything then mm -hmm. if you qualify on all the qualifications that are needed then you can go in and then you'll be routed into whatever they need you to do love that love that mm -hmm. now help me understand especially and i know everybody tuned in right now a lot of people i see them here online um how do i get to balance how do you get to balance because it's like you have a family <clears throat> you know you have a child or you have a family or you have a boyfriend or girlfriend whatever it is and then you have like your own life to live and then you have the military how do you get to balance and make it work? And on top of that, most of us have some religious affiliation. So you go to a church, to a mosque, to a, to a temple, whatever it is. How do you balance all of this while still in the military and you know make it work? Um, I will say that the, the military life is pretty much like the civilian life. Only the, 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 the difference is that you are in a difference uh, group of people and with different uh, probably bearings uh, there yes you're doing things say for instance you come in I will use myself as you come in you want to be a medical provider in the military so what do you do you will you will wear your uniform in the morning you will go to work in the morning just like anybody else uh, they come in scrubs you probably come in uniform Mm -hmm. Then at the end of the day, you end up, you finish your, your, your day, you go home and then it's pretty much, pretty much almost the same, the same life that you're living right now. Okay. The only things that differ and it depends, it's that there are some, some of the freedoms that you may not have exactly the same and um, saying freedoms cautiously here, meaning that at times it might be okay. We have this training, uh, we, we are doing this or probably it's not like you pick okay i want to go and live in florida for the next 10 years no you, mm. you end up not having those okay. but really you can still balance your life i've i've i've, I've joined I, I i've been in for for a while I've, I've gone to church every day i still read my lesson quarterly i still participate in church everything and still my family we're doing great um, mm. But then I know it can be a little different when you have a family and um, especially larger family, then those modalities, you might need to work on that. But it's mm -hmm. it's doable. What about um, this? I know you're not a female for sure, but um, what about when you are a female? Do we have equal chances of succeeding in the military? Do you think we need um, to prepare differently than males or... Um, Tell us something about being a female who want to join the military. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I will for sure say is, and why I do not regret joining, is just to seeing the fairness and the, the equal opportunity in, in it. Hmm. In that, um, you, you, you're not graded uh, just because you're female, you cannot, for, for anything, say, call it promotion or anything. It depends on your on your level of activity, how much you do, uh, how much you study, how because the promotions come by you doing exams. Mm. It's, it's, it's not that we look at who is muscled up, who is running fastest than anybody else, and then we promote them. No. It's, it's a by exam, you go, you qualify by what you do, uh, all things you do, and then all those ones are graded, and then you, you get your promotion. You deserve that, you get promoted. So other than the physical activity, that even when we come to do, I know people are scared of doing push-ups, mm -hmm. <laughs> but even when it comes to that, the grading is different for females and males. So yes, you need to be good oh. at it. Nice. But there's a standard for males and standard for females. I love that. It sounds like there's hope for females too. And you talk about promotion. Let's talk about that. Do we have room for promotion when someone joins? Do they get a chance to get promoted? And for those promotions, what do they need like to have, to show, to, to be for them to get those promotions? And how easy is it for you to get promoted? 
does it even come with a pay raise or pay bump? All right. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I'll start by, by referring to what I said at first. Is if you do not have the drive to be in it, you might get there and you join, okay, it's, it's ranked up. It's ranked from one to nine on the enlisted side and one to nine on the officer side. Mm -hmm. So say you come and you join your level, whatever, rank number, number two, you might stay there, stay there for, 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 for a few years and somebody mm. joins the same time with you and they rank up to five while you're still on rank number two. Why? Because it depends on who you are as a person. How are you performing? How is your performance? And performance is not only by, the, the, the performance is ranked differently, okay? You, you're doing your duties, you're, you're very disciplined, you're, you're meeting your, your requirements, you are in shape, you are studying enough, you're passing your exams. Hmm. You do those things, you're getting promoted. Hmm. Your okay. promotion is com comes that. There's still more than to that. If if you're going way beyond, it's it's just like uh, not just like in the civil war, but you go beyond what everybody can say. This person is performing way beyond everybody else. Right. There are chances where you can you are you say your commanding officer can come and say, I promote you today to the next rank, mm. and, and you get that. So there, there are chances where you can be promoted really quick. Mm -hmm. And there are people who join and eight years, they're still on level two, level one, not, not level two. If you're not making rank at some point, uh, you'll be pushed out hmm. because you need to grow into it. But gotcha. really, there are people who stay into it up to 18, almost 20 years retiring, but you're still on, say, a level six. Mm -hmm. and there are people who come in and within five years they already made it to that level six also or seven so okay. it depends on you as a person who you are okay i see so um, i think you asked about also the benefits of it yes yeah. the more rank you make the more the more the more money you will make because it, it goes by that your rank you're paid based on your rank and all that is on, online you can google that to see what the pay difference is for your rank Okay, great. All right. I will read one question here from Rosalita. And she says, someone said it's better to join as a college graduate as opposed to a high school grad. Is that, do you, do you think that is true? It, it is. It is. And uh, mm -hmm. we refer to what I said earlier that say, for instance, you, are, you, are, you have your college uh, degree. Mm -hmm. you have a chance you can apply to go direct into the office, officer side instead of joining as an enlisted person. Mm -hmm. um, both sides have their benefits. Um, they, they're both good. They're, they're both uh, mostly good. on the officer side, it has more benefit because you get a, a much better pay on that. So mm -hmm. joining as, as a college graduate, even if you join as a college graduate on the enlisted side, still you will come in, you can come in as an, the, it's called enlisted level E3. Mm -hmm. You can join as an E3 because you have a de college degree, but somebody who is coming with a, without one, um, it's probably you might join as an E1. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that gives you an advantage already. It pushes you ahead. Okay, I see. And now, and also, really, if you have a college degree, then that means you have a more chance to negotiate what you want to do. I have a college degree in business so i want to come and be in that line gotcha is it difficult for um let's say someone decides tonight right now you know what i'm gonna be joining the military is it difficult to get in is it as hard as getting um getting into med school or something like that <laughs> i like the equivalence of med school <laughs> it's 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 not. It's it's pretty easy and simple. I will say. Uh, once you make up your mind, it's it's tough. It it's tough to be in it. But mm -hmm. once you make your mind and you want to join, you see a recruiter. You can probably be in it within a few weeks to months. Uh, mm. and, and yeah, it's it's not hard at all. It's just to make sure you talk to a recruiter, set mm -hmm. your mind, and yeah, be ready first. Uh, keep yourself fit. And so when you're, you're, you're getting there, you, you will be in a better stand for you to pass all the 
pre-screening exams. Mm, get you. All right. Um, before we go to talk about now how to get this recruiter, like someone wants now to join, what are the steps? Where do you find these people? I'm going to read two more questions and we will okay. jump right into that. And Mo is asking, I heard joining military helps with student loans or tuition. Is that true? Um, this one I will say I will refer to a recruiter to your recruiter, but, but it's true. Their careers, if you come in with a particular some careers that's that's the, the truth about it that they are pos there is possibility that you they will pay your your loans off student. And, yeah but still even when you're in uh, for instance for me i joined while i had my associate i did my my bachelor's degree in it and i did not pay any penny because i just used tuition assistant and oh. while i was still in i did my 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 degree and i completed that so you you, they, 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 there is that benefit of them paying while you're in, but if you already have completed and you come in, there's mm -hmm. chance that okay. you will get her. Yeah. Gotcha. So when you're in it and go back to school, they will be paying you a tuition. It's it's a big thing that they push that you're in it, and okay. once you join it, don't don't just join and sit on it. They they people will push you. Hey, you need to go to school. You need to you need to get yourself better. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that I love about it is that if mm -hmm. you don't go there just to sit and 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 be there, mm -hmm. you no, know, everybody will be pushing you. Hey, you need to do this. You need to get yourself mm -hmm. ahead. Okay. Okay, great. I love that. And then uh, Nalieta is asking, what is the age limit for joining the military? All right. It is slightly different. It, it, it differs a little bit between services. And, and when we talk about military here, it's a, uh, the, the, okay, there's, there's the army, there's Navy, there is Air Force. Mm -hmm. And under and, and then I can say there's a Coast Guard also. And under the Navy, there's the Marines. The Marines and Navy kind of same there. But mm -hmm. it still, it depends with what service you're going into sometimes. And also if you're coming in as an enlisted or as an officer. Okay. You will find that some officers, they can take somebody even, I believe, up to 40 or 36, 42 years there, 41, 42. So it depends. Say, for instance, you're a doctor and you want to join to be a physician in the military. Yeah, that age limit is a little slightly higher yeah. than somebody who is just joining as an enlisted person. That one is down to, I think, 33, 32. But I joined late. Personally, I joined late at, at 33 and I joined the enlisted side has been great. It was great. But it, mm -hmm. sometimes, mm -hmm. as I said, it can be a challenge because you're joining at 30, and you're joining with kids, uh, sorry to call them kids, but you're joining with 20 and 19 year olds. And so you should be able to be able to integrate and live and mm -hmm. work with those. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I love with it is that once you join, it brings everybody into that one level that you become one thing and mm -hmm. your mind is supposed to work with anybody who you are with cohesively okay mm -hmm. i'm gonna read the last question and then we're gonna move into the next and the last phase of how to actually join how to get the recruiter and okay. if anyone has a question um we are now winding down so please go ahead and type it in we will we will do our best to address it before we finish so if you have a question please go ahead and write it in where we'll be addressing it we have dr Jeanette who is asking when one joins he or she go through the seniors exercises especially for ladies are they gonna be going through all those exercises for ladies <laughs> i love that question because i i, I had the same concerns like i'm a lady if i join today and i have my degree do i have to go do all of that <laughs> <laughs> okay um for one thing that i will say is that um yeah whether you come as an enlisted or as an officer or whatever you're joining as uh, you're joining a force that you need to be in good shape uh in good physical standards uh, i will call it because every year you'll be tested twice or uh, and, and and this is just to test for your endurance for your strength and such things and so uh mostly especially if you're joining as an enlisted i will say that because i went through that <clears throat> if you if you do run if you're a kenyan you're good <laughs> <laughs> but, but if, if if you if you do run uh, you do run you do your push-ups a few here and there you do your sit-ups uh it's good to maintain that to be in that physical 
health. Um, but you will be tested in, uh, you'll go through training and testing in, in bootcamp from the moment you join. But what I will encourage people is, yeah, if you're joining, start doing those things now so that when you're even before you join, you're able to feel how it will be like. But there will be, yes, you will be tested mm, to, mm. To, to, okay. to make sure that you're in standards. You're in Although it, standards. it might not be very strenuous. Uh -huh. and yeah, it's, it's something that is doable because I've seen people who are even way older than I am, but they still do that. They did it. I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see Innocent is agreeing with you. Yes, but you need evaluation first. <laughs> yeah. Innocent yeah, the evaluations are there. Mm -hmm. There's the evaluation that you will go through, uh, the medical evaluation and 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 all that. And, and then before they send you to boot camp, they do test you to make sure that you can do some push-ups and sit-ups and, and run. So, so just to make those things, make sure yeah, you're doing that. Okay. Probably even if you're not to par what is expected, they know that you will get it as you go on. Gotcha. All right. I'm going to read the last question, then we move on. And this is Prince so Omari is asking, can you join with a Kenyan associate diploma? What do you advise? Like for somebody who has a foreign diploma from Kenya, from Ghana, from whatever, can they come in and join? First of all, who can join the military? Okay. Do they have to be American citizens or you don't have to be a citizen? Number two, do they take a foreign education? Does it count? Okay. Uh, for one of those questions, I will pretty much kind of refer to the recruiter, but I will say what I know mm -hmm. uh, for sure is uh, for joining also, you do not have to be a citizen. <clears throat> Uh, you can join as some services. You can join as a green card holder. Okay. If you have a green card, if you hold a green card, you may be able to join some of the services. Some of them will require to be um, uh, a citizen. And as I said, also even in some, say for instance, if you're joining uh, the, say the navy. I mean the navy. If you're joining the navy, you cannot be an officer if you're not a citizen. So mm -hmm. if you're joining, but you have a green card, uh, you may be able to join the enlisted and then once you get your citizenship then transfer to officer side Got education uh, foreign education i will say i'm not sure i don't think they recognize foreign mm -hmm. no. uh, but i'm not giving it a hundred percent if you have that the best thing will be get it translated so that it reflects what it can be in the american system Right. I think it's the same with jobs that you uh, help people in the civilian side. Yes, yes. It's the same way that I help people translate that knowledge into the American standard. But now when it comes to like an associate uh, diploma, uh, Omari in dipl diploma, a Kenyan diploma, is technically equivalent to an associate degree, but it's not really an associate degree according to America. If you get it uh, standardized by like OS, it's not going to come out like an associate degree per se. And so, yeah, that might be a little tricky, to be honest. Um, and then uh, Mo was asking about evaluation. That is what Innocent talked about, and Kamau addressed that question. Um, so now let's talk about somebody who wants to join. Where do they start? Where do they find these recruiters? Do they can they call you? Can they call someone who they know is in the military and let them know, hey, I want to join the military? Where do I start? Wait, before we go there. Actually, hold that. What is the difference between the, the military, the Navy, the US Army, and the Air Force? And which one would be like the top? preference versus the other. Let's start there so that the, the, the viewers who really want to join, mm -hmm. they can make their mind, do I join as a Navy, <laughs> as an Army, or as a uh, Marine, or yeah, whatever, Air Force? What's the difference? Okay, that, that's a very good question. And I will say, um, it depends with the person too. Uh, and thank God that these all these services are there and they are all different. Um, what I will tell you uh, from experience, I know most, a lot of Kenyans have joined the army because <laughs> uh, the army is more of a combat kind. Uh, you think of a soldier who is going to war to fight and, and be that to carry the guns and all that. There are people who love that. And so that, that, that is what the army are for. The army is more of a combat. Okay. Combat kind of, uh, but you still can find things to do in the army that are not that. 
exactly that come every day. Still mm -hmm. in the army, they do have the medical. They, they have the medics in the army who you can be there in the army. Yes, you're a medic, you're doing medic, but slightly different. Uh, and that is what army is. Army is known to be that tough guys and so if you're that tough we yeah, are go that route i love um, that <laughs> i want to do that <laughs> um mm -hmm. navy on the other side navy mostly deals with uh, securing the waters any seas and all that the ships and all that so the navy pretty much what navy functions as navy is like a conduit it's like an access which by which the army is going to to say asia or whatever they, they cannot drive their tanks there so mm -hmm. we use the Navy, the Navy, we transport them there, we take them there and there, and our Navy people will still be there to service them. So Air Force, the same. Air Force cannot be flying there just from here to there. They need our aircraft carriers to fly to and fro. Mm. So pretty much it's, it's the whole of it is military, but each thing is doing a little different thing. Like a major <laughs> department, it's like there's a major department for that and there's like into three groups. Pretty much. But you all have the same mission. Same, the mission is that same, same mission. So we are guarding our land. We will go and fight our enemies. We will we'll make sure that we are at peace and everybody is doing something. The Air Force takes care of the air. And, and, and we know that the Coast Guard, they are border, our borders and all that. They're taking care of that. And, and, and so everybody's working towards that one thing. <clears throat> but then when you're joining, it depends on who you are, what you can do best. Uh, while I joined the Navy, I didn't know. I, I was learning how to swim when I joined. <laughs> and so if, if you know you can run, but you cannot swim, might be for you to say, okay, I'll join the army. Or if you think you can swim, yeah, I can, I can try that maybe. Because you'll be tested on that and you have to pass. So again, go where you, you feel that you can be best at. Okay, so for the viewers, just to clarify that, <laughs> you can choose to join the Navy, you can choose to go by the Army, you can choose to go by the Air Force, but you just have to be comfortable with whatever they do. Air Force is mostly in the air, the Army is like more combat, badass, and the Navy is in the water and transportation. <laughs> okay. And, and not to be biased, I will say, um, mm -hmm. mostly, say for instance, uh, you, you will find uh, and, and and these are also very carefully stuck. Yes, it's comfortable to be anywhere, but it's it's kinder like the, the say for instance the um, the, the, the air force. Mm -hmm. You join the air force mostly. What do they do? You might uh, not you know, <laughs> just fly the the, the jets. Fly jets and <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Well, there are a few other things that they do, and so mostly uh, it's it's say the the, the air force. Uh, you need to be a little more learned. You need to do blah blah blah. It's it's true, but still they are very very learned people in the army. They are very much more learned people in the navy the, the same way. But then again, it's okay in the navy. You come. What are you doing? You we are not just driving the boats. No, you can come to the navy. The navy carries everything. We have people who 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 still are our MAs. They they are there. They they do the combat thing. We have uh, the the the. the the the, the 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 marines are still the branch of the navy so mm. it it you can find something to do in whichever branch you go just be comfortable with it and go for it i don't discourage anybody who want to be in the army i just tell them hey if if, if you want to be in the navy come we will take you wherever you want <laughs> <laughs> i agree because i have a friend he's called george george Angoro, mm. and he's in the army and he's pursuing like orthopedic surgery you know, exactly. mm -hmm. doing pretty good. And, and also Innocent is agreeing with you. Like I said, Innocent is also in the army. He's in the military. And mm -hmm. he's saying, yeah, it depends with the job rate and all of that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right. Now, you guys educate me, educate us, educate the viewers, because people have been here from the moment we started. They are glued here. <laughs> now, the next question is, um, I'm at a point where now I want to join the military. I want to join the Navy. Maybe I actually want to talk to someone in the Navy, military, and in the Army before I can make up my mind. Where do I find these guys? Because we don't see them posted like all over on the internet or on the streets. Like we are hiring, come come on in. Where do we find them, and how do we even get started? Mm. <clears throat> sure. Um, before I believe a lot of our recruiters um have their information on online. You can just easily Google our 
military recruit a near me and they will pop up they will show up the, the only thing is that some of them might be located in places like on bases where you might not have access to go to but just contacting them and telling them hey i need uh, to join i need more information they will definitely make time to come and see you they they, they usually visit schools especially here in the mm -hmm. u.s i know they visit schools to come and recruit from there Mm -hmm. or the best also that i can say if you know somebody just give them a call give me a call uh we'll lead you to a recruiter somewhere i'll uh, okay. contact them and have make sure that you get you get into it oh that is awesome so when you know somebody in the military they can guide you you can guide me to the right recruiter in the right process Mm, yes, I will say all recruiters pretty much there, right? Because <laughs> right. their, their job is pretty much to get you into it. And um, okay, yeah, okay. but I, I will say yeah, pretty much if you know somebody who is in it, or even if you Google, you will be able to find a recruiter closest to you. Mm, mm, I love that. Okay, and now, oh, sorry, you guys, I see it. Innocent is in the army. Is actually in the air force. Innocent is in the air force. If you're interested awesome. in that, Kamal is in the navy. So we are so blessed to have two people right now contributing. One is in the navy, and the other one in the air force. Now we did not talk about the coast guard. You mentioned about the coast guard, but we did not address about it. What do you have to say about a coast guard? Is it, is, is, is it as hardcore as the Army or the Navy or Air Force, or how is it? Uh, from my perspective, I will say I respect all branches, no matter which it is, because mm -hmm. whatever one does, maybe the other one cannot do. Because mm -hmm. uh, God, we share them the waters with them. Uh, they, they, they got our borders. And, and their training, every, every branch's training is different. And that's mm -hmm. why I said, uh, the Army, they go through a rigorous training that is very different from the Navy. Uh, the Navy's training, they want you to be able to know how to swim away if your, si uh, your ship is sinking, right? Uh, they need you to know one or two things. The Army, totally, they probably don't even care about you swimming. All they want to know is you can run 10 miles from your enemy or you can run after them for 10 miles, right? And so everyone is being trained differently. And I believe even the Coast Guards, they have their own training and their way of doing it which will be hard to mm -hmm. somebody say for instance who is who is an army person trying to join the coast guard Gotcha. Oh, I love that. Okay. So, yes, uh, we are at a point where now we are concluding the show. We are actually like two minutes over. And I'll just read a few comments really quick so that we can finish. And we have one more question to um to wind the show. Um, Innocent is saying, good show, always watching. A uh, nice show that is Jamba, very informative. People are very thankful to you for the information you. you have brought here. And the last question, as we finish, this is gonna really be the last question. <laughs> <laughs> the last question is, any chef job in the military? Can someone do it, get a um, job? Do you guys eat? That's <laughs> I would say, uh, I, I will. I will say. What was his name again? <laughs> that was. Oh, I. I removed it. Um, okay, it's. It's all right. Uh, uh, Shamim. 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 Yeah. That. That is one of the jobs that is uh, termed as the best job because uh, everybody will be your friend because oh. you, know, you give them what they need. Food. <laughs> you. You. You can live without food. So it. It's there. It's there. If you want one, you can. You can get. You can get a job there. <laughs> okay, Shamim, you can yeah. get a job as a chef. Uh, he says that people will love you because you bring what everybody needs. Um, <laughs> so that is yeah. going to be about it for now. <laughs> mm. Dr. Jeanette is saying, great job by these awesome siblings. Kudos. We appreciate that, mm. Dr. Jeanette. We really appreciate you and everybody uh, logging in. Reading the last comments, Rosadilla, I think most of the young ones also need to know they have options when it comes to choosing a major. Most of them score high in sciences, so they get pushed into engineering and such. And from what I hear, they are not aware they can choose to go completely different direction career-wise. Do you agree with that, Kamal? I agree with it as a career and uh, advisor. <laughs> I, I very much agree with it. And, and mm -hmm. that's what I was saying. Also, when, say for instance, when you're joining, and that's why I say, especially um, if we can advise our young people, 
who are young here, somebody who doesn't know exactly what they want, and that will be my advice to us parents or us grown-ups who know about it. Mm. It's not like back in Kenya or I believe in other African countries where military is left for the dropouts and people who don't know what they're doing in life. This is very different. <clears throat> you can come in and you say, okay, this is my line that I'm going into. And if you come here and you you have your your line, like say here you say in the sciences, yes, what part of science are you pursuing? Pursue it, and even when you join, still pursue it. I joined as a medical, or I was a med medical lab tech, but still I'm pursuing. I push push that into the medical still. Right now, I'm I'm still doing medical thing in the outside, still pursuing that career. And guess what that is doing. I'm living both my life in the civilian side and in the military, benefiting from both of those, doing what I very much love. Mm. And one mm. other thing, if you can allow me to say something that I, I got from this, <clears throat> I, I sure. don't hate to live without saying this, is this, that in, in the military, one thing that I learned is that you can be there I, I know people say it's it's messed up and all that, it's dirty people curse and all that. You can be there and be the best person and come out the best as you can. Because sometimes until we meet a resistance, all those temptations for us to do something else, that is that is what sometimes will sharpen us. And I will say oh, that's possible. How can you go through that? Because I see the pictures posted online where like a general is on my face cursing now and calling all the possible names that can provoke me. <laughs> how can I how can I remain calm under that type of pressure? It, that comes with that comes with training and you knowing who you are and what you are there for. Is mm -hmm. that even no matter what they do to you, they're not there to break you up. They are just there to establish you, to make you strong to make you a better soldier, better leader, a better sailor, a better of whatever it is. Mm. And so when you have that in the back of your mind, then you can withstand anything that comes to you. Mm. Mm. And so it, it it is, if and I will say that again, is if you go there with a proper mind that I'm going there to do this because I love doing it and I know at the end of it, the, I will reap the benefit out of it. Just, 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 just zip up your mouth and, 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 mm. and just continue focusing on that. And go. Okay. Someone just <laughs> texted me a question. I think it's only fair if I read it or if we talk about it. And uh, someone just asked me, when you join, do you have to go through it or to live through it for the rest of your life? Can you get out of the military when you want to? Oh, sure. We can answer that. Um, so when once you're joining, usually you sign a contract. And the first contract is usually about, in most services, I believe it's eight years. And the eight years is either you can choose to do five active or four active years and then four reserve years. That's your mm -hmm. first contract. Mm -hmm. So you can choose to get out after the, the, the first eight. Okay. Uh, or if you finish, you finish your eight, you can choose to, to leave. Okay. Um, good. Thank you for your service. But I most love people, that. Most people, if, you, if you've done eight, why not just stick out for 12 more and then you, you reap the whole benefit at the end of it. Because once okay. you get to your 20 year and plus, then that's when you will be getting your retirement benefits. Gotcha. Oh, I see Samuel. Samuel Munene is right here and he is mm. a Coast Guard. I love that. Military people joined in the show and <laughs> you guys <laughs> are good. doing awesome. That's, that's my is, buddy right there. <laughs> right? And he's saying yes. And he has his uh, Coast Guard uniform already, like saluting. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for your service. So Sami is saying yes. For example, in the Coast Guard, we have a job culinary specialist. I don't know what that is, but it's <laughs> it sounds like something that means that there, is, there are different type of jobs and ranks that you can fit in. Mm -hmm. And um, Sami, if you want to comment on what that means, sure, we can read that comment for a without a doubt. And Willie is saying, I love my siblings. Thank you, guys. Um, and then someone is asking, how do you go about it? Somebody is requesting for your contact. Okay. <laughs> so he's yeah, like, Shamin here, uh, you have contact information because I think Shamin is is determined and he has she has he or she has made up mm. his mind or her mind to join the military. Sure. If you have um, just contact anyone depending on who you want to which you want to join, and mostly these recruiters they work together. And so, say for instance, you go there, they might try to win you into joining, say army because they're army recruiters. 
But if you go and tell them, I really want to join the Air Force, they can guide you to the Air Force recruiters also that way. And uh, yeah, culinary specialists, yeah, they, they pretty much deal with making sure the food that we're eating, whether you're deployed or you are here in state, the oh. food that you eat, it's just, it's, it's a chef pretty much. Oh, the, the one that Sami talked about makes yeah. sense. It makes sense now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's for them. There's there's is to make sure diet, food, all that is taken care of. Got you might be the one cooking for the for the greatest guy in the navy. Mm. Who knows? Mm. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And then Annie Anna is asking what the age limit is. You had addressed that question. So Annie, I think you joined us late. Please feel free to go back and um, to watch the show because the time has lasted really much. It's almost an hour. We had planned to do a 45 maximum and now it's almost an hour because you guys had a lot of questions and we did not want to um, not address them. So I really want to thank you guys and especially I want to thank Kamau as a US Navy for joining us here. I want to thank Innocent as the Air Force and I want to thank Samuel Monene as um, Coast Guard and we really appreciate you guys for your service into this nation and the entire world because technically we cannot operate without you guys. And thank you so much Kamau. Um, for the information you have provided you have shared with us i can promise you a lot of people are watching they will be watching and people will be making decisions to join the army the navy the coast guard and all of that because of this information it's one thing to hear about it it's another to see somebody who look like you who is an immigrant like you who is coming from the same continent or country as you tell you about it and tell you, you know what, this is a good career that you can pursue. So I really highly appreciate for you coming to my show. I know we are siblings and I could feel entitled. <laughs> I am not entitled, I so much appreciate. And so I'll give you a chance to say anything if you wanna say something before we wind up the show. And also before that, I really appreciate you guys for tuning in and sticking us with us like 57 minutes. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. I think my last words will be, uh, if, if I, will, I will say I'm ready to come back again. If people still need more information, I'll be more than willing to share as much as we can share, though we might not disclose everything. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. again, it's a... Uh, if you if you feel like you need to, uh, don't wait, uh, because the more you wait, the more years you're wasting, that you could be building up uh, your 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 future um, retirement benefits. And as I had said, is say for instance, you join at twenty, uh, right there, you 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 start counting your twenty, and there comes your retirement. And so you can plan your life much better when you join Ali. And uh, one more thing is don't join just for the benefit join because in your heart you want to do something for other people because it's called service it's not something you're not coming to be served you're going in to serve and by that i will say you're serving others at the same time don't forget ever to serve god as you do so i love that Thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is it. Now I'm going to put an end to the show. I appreciate we will plan on bringing Kamal again on the show. And I will also plan on inviting others because as you can see, um, you military guys are very cohesive. They just came from nowhere and they are, you are all in tune. You are all speaking the same language. We really appreciate that. So this is the end of it. I thank you, everybody. Reach out to Kamau. His Facebook uh, information is tagged on this show. So you can go to my page, The Gina Guy Show, uh, or on my personal profile. Gina Mugai, and you'll be able to see Kamal Mugai. You can inbox him, DM him, reach out to Samuel if you want to get into uh, uh, Coast Guard, or reach out to my innocent if you want to get into the Air Force. And with that, you guys have a lovely rest of the weekend. <laughs>